Welcome everyone to this Q&A of The Other Side. Uh, my name is Sofia Barra and I'm the producer um, of the short as well as the moderator for today's Q&A. With me I have the cast and crew um, joining us and um, if I could, if you could please just stay on mute until we open up for the audience Q&A, um, that'd be great. In the meantime, please know that this meeting will be recorded. So if you're not comfortable with video, that is completely understandable. Just keep it off. Um, but you're more than welcome to join with video as well. Um, so just so you know how it's kind of going to roll today, we're going to start with some introductions and some opening questions. Tell a little bit about the short for those that haven't seen it. Um, and then we're going to open up to the audience for questions. In the meantime, feel free to drop some questions in the chat. We're definitely going to answer them in the end. Um, and please let us know if you're okay with coming up on video. We can definitely join the filmmakers on screen. Um, and we'd love to, you know, if you're comfortable with it, we'd love to see your face and hear from you. Um, thank you so much to the Greenwich Film Festival. This is an honor and we're so excited to have shared with you, to have the opportunity to share with you the short. Um, I'm not sure if Shari is on here, but thank you so much, Shari, for having us. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to introduce ourselves, first name and our role in the film, in the order of the hashtags on the screen. So, Ethan, why don't you kick it off? Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Ethan Harisi, and I play Abel. Wayna, I think you are unmuted. Hi, let's try that again. Hi, everybody. My name is Wayna, and I play Mehmet. Hey, everyone. Um, this is Josh. Thank you all for coming. I am the writer and director of The Other Side. Again, I'm Sophia. I'm the producer, and as well as the moderator for today. Hey, guys. This is Bem Net, or Bem Yumeskin, uh, producer on the Ethiopia side, and... If you want to follow me, my handle is actually oh my Bem. That one is a personal account, but that's fine. I might not say yes to that uh, request. That's okay. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Tom Ingvarsen. I'm from Germany. I go to NYU as well, and I was a director of photography. All right. Well, welcome everyone, um, and thank you guys for your introductions. Um, all right, we're gonna get started with. The first and foremost question, for those that haven't seen the short, Josh, why don't you tell us what it is about and how the short came to be? Wow, that's that's a that's a great question. Yeah, so the other side, um, for those of you who do not know, is a narrative short that we shot last summer in Ethiopia. And it's set against the Ethiopian abandoned children crisis and follows the story of two orphans, um, one of whom is about to turn 18 and graduate his orphanage and leave his younger brother behind. Um, their world is a little disrupted when a potential adopting couple comes to the orphanage. Um, and the two brothers ultimately have to wrestle with um, waiting for a dream that may never come true, never being adopted. Um, the story was inspired by um, a mission trip I went on with my church, McLean Bible Church, two summers ago in 2018. We went um, to Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia, um, alongside Orphan Care Ethiopia to kind of uh, work with some of the orphanages um, and provide some support down there. And during my time in one of the government boys' orphanages, I met this 16-year-old boy named Abel. And as I kind of spent time with him, I got to learn a little bit about his life, about how he was leaving his brother behind. Um, and more importantly, I learned about the abandoned children crisis in Ethiopia. Right now, there are five million orphans in the country, um, and a lot of them uh, kind of live on the streets or live in the orphanages. And when you turn 18, um, you graduate your orphanage and have to generally fend for yourself on the streets, and it, it contributes to a large street children population. Um, so I was kind of inspired by his story and um, wrote a script uh, about that, and a year later, um, McLean Bible Church and uh, Orphan Care Ethiopia were so kind to kind of help us come back and go shoot this. And this time, um, we brought a whole bunch of NYU students. Some of us are NYU students. Um, we got to collaborate with a U.S. team, an Ethiopia team, um, and we got to film in some of the same orphanages, um, same locations. We actually got to reunite with Abo again. Um, and yeah, and so we have a little exclusive clip from the movie for those of you who haven't seen it. 
Um, this is just a little conversation between two of our main characters, Abel, um, who Ethan plays, who's in the red, and uh, Kia, who is an outstanding first-time actor in Adonai. He's a Ethiopian, young Ethiopian actor. Then. Currently, um, uh, he's in Ethiopia right now. Um, but uh, we really wanted to show you this little clip. We think it's a really cool introduction to kind of the world. Abin, wait, Abin. Hey, shut up. Go, 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 you come down. Where are you even going? No. No, this again? You're not saying a word to me yet. Tomorrow, come. See the people from Addis and I'll keep your secrets. What? You thought that was real? I mean, yeah, I think so. Last year, we all waited. And no one ever came. But this time, what if it's real? No. Look, even if they came, they'd go for the little ones, like Dagi or Arman. You don't know that? Kia. When's the last time they picked someone our age? Like Amari or Joseph? Jose doesn't even want to leave. Okay, okay? they're all still here. We are all still here. No one comes to a letter because they want to. All right, thanks so much, Josh. So for those of you that are just joining us, welcome to the Q&A for The Other Side. My name is Sophia and I'll be your moderator today. Um, please make sure as you're coming in to stay muted. And this meeting is being recorded, so if you're not comfortable with video, we completely understand you can stay off video. Um, so for those of you that if you'd like to watch the rest of the short, hopefully yes, um, you can find it in the virtual film festival in the Greenwich Film Festival site. Um, and now uh, a little bit, let's find out a little bit about the rest of our panelists. So um, Ethan, Wayne, and Demnitz, you all have very diverse um, and interesting backgrounds. Uh, Ethan, you were coming off of, uh, right before this, you were coming off of Ava DuVernay's Netflix series, When They See Us. And Wayna, you have a music background as a Grammy-nominated recording artist. Um, and Demnet, you had an extensive career in both the US and Ethiopia with companies like Nike, Adidas, and now Discord. I'd love to hear about um, how each of you came to join this project and how it fits into your career. Am I going first? Yeah. Um, so, as Sophia mentioned, um, I had the last thing I had filmed was um, Avery Duvernay's Netflix series "When They See Us," and um, I was at school at UC Irvine, um, just starting off my first quarter there. And me and uh, Josh have a mutual friend um, that goes to NYU. I went to high school with her. Her name's Grace, and she's a part of the team as well. Um, and she came to me with the idea of being a part of this film, taking on the lead, um, put me in contact with Josh and, um, he, he told me all about the film. He told me, he, he sent me the script and everything. And after reading it and seeing that it was what it was all about, um, I told him that I would talk to, talk to my team. Um, and I talked to my manager who has a friend who has adopted kids from Ethiopia. So she was 100% on board with it from, from jump. She was behind me if I wanted to do it because she saw that it was an important story. She had personal experience with it. Um, and to me, I was, I was, I was sold <laughs> um, pretty shortly after, after discussions with my parents and my manager as well because, you know, reading the story, seeing what it's all about, having the opportunity to film something so important in Ethiopia, um, it felt like something I couldn't pass up on because, you know, something I want to continue doing um, is to tell important stories like this one and be a part of important stories like this one that, that where I can use my platform um, to speak for others. So that's how I became a part of this uh, awesome film. Do you want to go ahead? Yes. Okay. Hey, everybody. 
great to be here. Uh, so, I, I mean, my introduction was pretty simple. It's uh, the other panelist here, Bram Nets, the producer who I've worked with previously and knew uh, for many years and had a lot of mutual friends with, approached me about this project. And I, I hadn't honestly acted uh, since I was a little kid. And it was, um, you know, just a little uh, a very uncomfortable and uh, a new concept for me entirely. But I uh, stayed open to the idea and um, and read the script and was really, really blown away by it. I thought it was so uh, honest and heartfelt and uh, such a beautiful um, sort of window into this world that not of a lot not a lot of people have access to. And I wanted to be a part of helping to share that story and um, and to to portray this this woman who I think is a really special woman, the character that I get to play in my head. So yeah, it was really cool. Thanks, Raina. What about you, Ben Nett? Awesome. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Nett. I also go by Ben or B. Um, I am the producer on the Ethiopia side of the team. And just a little bit of background about myself. So I'm a little bit of a, kind of a, a creative that's done a lot of different things. So photographer, uh, you know, I was a designer in my early years and art director. Uh, I've been working as a creative director in the last uh, probably six years. And um, probably about three years ago, I started getting into long form or, you know, narrative form uh, content. So I wrote and directed my first short film about three years ago. And then I started really getting into, um, you know, creating uh, content for, uh, you know, narrative types of uh, projects. So I moved to Ethiopia about two and a half years ago to uh, kind of be part of, uh, to head up the creative department or the, uh, the brand for Girl Effect, which is a Nike Foundation project in Ethiopia. And we launched a, uh, the first TV series in Ethiopia that was uh, targeting like teens and, and youth. So about, uh, I'd say last year, early last year, I got a call from a friend of mine who was looking for somebody to produce uh, the short film in Ethiopia for uh, a young uh, writer, director. And I was curious, so I, uh, we got on email and he sent me the script. And I read the script and I quickly got on a call with Josh and I was in, visiting some family in DC at the time. And, and Josh told me his vision for the film and what he was trying to accomplish. And we really hit it off, I think, right off the first phone call. Um, he just seemed, uh, very mature and knew exactly what he wanted to do and and uh, and kind of resigned on like pretty much right away I met Sophia shortly after that who was producing everything on the US side and who ended up coming to Ethiopia to to do the production on the ground as well so uh, that's a little bit about me and about uh, how I got involved in the project thanks so much Bennett. um so yeah i mean it's been great having you guys and it's definitely like it's unimaginable without you um and we definitely you know you made the whole experience complete um so tom josh and i actually go to nyu um and so between all this we got to battle it making the film itself with school um so tom what's it like for other student filmmakers um finding that balance between filming um and school i mean it's important to say that this wasn't a school project, so this was fully outside of school. As Josh said, um, he went to Ethiopia and the same organization asked him to, to come again. And um, yeah, so we, we made this entirely outside of school. And I have to say, we, we went obviously in pre-production, we went to a lot of meetings like um, the Independent Filmmaker Project um, to find financing, to find um, contacts that could help us in some way, because especially going to Ethiopia, in the summer um, isn't the e easiest way, um, but I have to say um, I came I came on relatively late in the process where the script was mostly written and some some groundwork was laid. Um, like Bemnet was already on the project, but I have to give kudos to Josh and Sophia for for sticking through this um, for <laughs> um, not always putting school as the first priority but making this project happen while also i mean they're still in school so they managed to to do the projects but it's, a I think it's, <laughs> it's great that they made this happen that they 
were able to get multiple people to Ethiopia, that they were able to get people organized in Ethiopia whilst balancing schoolwork. And especially um, on the post-production side, after the summer in the fall semester, um, I remember um, sitting with Josh on, on different edits, trying to find it, was also working on other projects for school. So it is, it is a lot of extra work, but at the end of the day, especially if you're in film school, I guess that's what you want to do anyways. So it's, it's really rewarding to see all of you here now for this Q&A and to see the film being done and to be able to have other people see it. So I think it's definitely worth all the effort. Hey, I, I will be the first one to say that this was not, it was not just me, it was not just me and Sophia, it was a, a huge group of people. And I think that is the, the thing that I'm most grateful for, just being able to have you know, such a supportive community of people um, at NYU, outside of NYU, in Ethiopia, from church, just all, all able to, to work together. And I think um, a huge part of this is like, we had a whole bunch of um, support from the US side. We had a whole US team, and then I'll let them talk a little bit about the Ethiopia team. But we had a, a fantastic group of a lot of students, really, um, from NYU, from outside NYU, that were kind of helping um, us. So I think, you know, if Olivia is out there watching this, I, I, I kind of went to Ethiopia with her. Those two summers ago, we made a, a little docu-series called Kings and Queens, um, and she was able to come back and help us on this project. We have uh, Grace and Celia helping with marketing, um, Sophia Harapo associate producing, um, Philip Business Development, Cameron Art Direction. There's The list goes on and on. Um, and so we're so happy um, for that and grateful for that. We also have a, uh, a huge group of supportive um, executive producers that have completely made this thing possible. So if you are watching, um, Augustine, Jonathan, Khalil, um, Sunil, Gracie, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bar, Mr. and Mrs. Leong, my parents. Um, thank you so much. Um, we, we say it from the bottom of our heart. Um, there is, we, we couldn't do this without you. Um, so, so we're so grateful uh, for that. Um, and there was, there was also a plan, plan shop uh, was a big donor too. So thank you so much. Um, but as you can see in this picture, this was taken from uh, rap. We also got to work with a whole bunch of uh, Ethiopian crew, casting crew, um, and that was uh, made possible um, a lot in part um, by Bemnit over here. I'll let him explain a little more. Unmute. Uh, so yeah, the process of producing a short narrative in Ethiopia, I mean, it's, there's a lot of challenges. So first thing was, I think from our initial talks with Josh was uh, the script was written in English and Josh definitely wanted to stick to uh, an English script and an, you know to, to actually film in English which is interesting because a lot of times um, when you're looking at films pro you know produced in foreign countries people are very protective about making it in, in, in that local language but you know for me I think um, the, the story is the most important part and whatever the best way to communicate that story is above everything else. Um, so once we knew that we were gonna cast for an English uh, speaking uh, crew or a talent, uh, we had our work cut out for us. We also needed to find out where we were gonna shoot, uh, get all the permits in place and then really staff up from a crew standpoint. So um, have uh, a really amazing team in Ethiopia um, and I'll, I'll mention some of them, uh, Freywet or Frey was our casting director. Um, she did a phenomenal job making sure that we had the right talent. And uh, Adonai, who was the uh, star or supporting star, uh, supporting actor. And then as well as all the, all the other pieces that go into making a narrative, which is like finding extras and finding uh, other non-speaking roles and, and such. So it's, it's uh, Seems pretty straightforward, but the casting process, I mean, we went through, uh, I don't know, quite a few, right, Josh? We, we went through several contact sheets and, oh, and casting casting while Josh and the team were in the U.S. So we were doing, you know, sending them films and casting sessions and all this kind of stuff. And one of the biggest struggles was to find a young actor to play Adonai, who is somewhere between age 9 and 12, um, who could act, who could speak English fluently, and uh, you know that that was a challenge in it. So I wanted to say, other, yeah. I don't know. I was like 
one of the last kids you guys had auditioned at all. Yeah. Well. We were getting a little desperate. <laughs> Man, <laughs> we, were little we were, it's funny how everything, on every production, there's always moments where you just, you know, you don't think it's going to happen. You don't, it's just like hopeless, hopeless, hopeless. And then the very last minute, things just come together, you know, and it, and it was one of those. And he walked in the room, he did the audition. And I saw the audition, I knew right away. And I, as soon as I sent it to you, I think we all agreed right away that he was the one. Um, so big kudos to Frey and, and uh, Teddy or Tedos, who uh, wore a lot of hats, uh, although he kind of really championed locations. So he found us all the right locations to shoot in. We wanted to make it super authentic. So we actually shot in a private orphanage and just outside of Addis, uh, all the city scenes uh, that were shot in, in a busy market in Addis, really hard to pull off. Uh, so we're able to do that. Um, a couple other people worth mentioning are uh, Buffet or Buffer Do Did Sound uh, and uh, Jet Li or Yapsara, <laughs> uh, who uh, was a production manager, so making sure to take care of all the light, you know, permitting. And then, of course, uh, I would be remiss not to mention Tamima, who did makeup and made Ethan look amazing in so many scenes. So, um, yeah, I mean, the crew in Ethiopia, and there was a lot of others, you know, like uh, translators and and uh, production assistants and stuff like that. So in the interest of time, I'm not going to mention everybody, but I will tell you having the right crew will make uh, or break any production, especially when you're shooting in a place where there is a lot of challenges uh, to, to produce. Them. Yeah, and I think absolutely. Um, if you can't tell from this picture, we were a family, and it was just such an amazing time together. Yapsura is here. He is in the comments. He would like everyone to know that, and so I'm going to shout him out right here. But, um, yeah, I think along with kind of filming in, in Ethiopia, a lot of it was hard even just planning and, and going there and shooting from a logistical perspective. Shooting in a, in a foreign foreign country. So I want to I wanna spin it back to our, our moderator here. Hey, really quickly, just so people don't get confused, Yabsana's nickname is Jet Li, so Jet Li wasn't in the, yeah. <laughs> in the production. <laughs> That's his nickname, right? That's right, yeah. Um, but I just want to ask, like, Sophia, why don't you tell us a little bit about, like, kind of the complexities of shooting, producing in, in a foreign country? Sure. I mean, Bennett didn't cover it, uh, like, it's without without him and without his crew, we couldn't have done this. Certainly, um, especially without Bennett, because he was the key for us, like making it happen. Especially all the way here in the U.S. Um, there were some challenges here and there. I mean, we were lucky to have found um, two great like look like great locations. Your friend just we shot in. Uh, this video over here shows one of them, um, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, it was a little hard not knowing exactly like the locations or being able to know the space exactly um, until we got there. Um, but I think that perhaps the biggest challenge, there we are on a location scout, um, perhaps the biggest challenge I think was uh, the weather because we went right during the Ethiopian rainy season. Um, there I am. <laughs> and we knew it was gonna be raining for at least every day. Um, and so we tried to come up with as many schedules as possible. The pre-production process was very comprehensive in trying to get, um, in trying to prepare as much as possible only for us to get there and for it all to go out the window because um, it was very unpredictable in that sense. So if it rained in the morning, it didn't rain in the afternoon. Um, if it rained in the afternoon, it didn't rain in the morning. Um, so it was a lot of like, it was a bit of a guessing game when we had to shift things around as we went along. Um, but it made it all the more exciting, I think. Um, and our crew was so patient with all the changes that kept coming along. So thank you guys for that, of course, as usual. Um, Josh, you want to talk a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, okay, I want to say, Sophia was staying up so late every <laughs> night and waking up so early every morning for those 10 days we were there, just changing the schedule because it was changing every day. Um, the weather was was not cooperative, but I think yeah, as part of going to the orphanage or shooting in these real orphanages, we also got to interact with some people and meet some old friends again. Um, this is Abel. This is the sixteen year old boy, now seventeen, eighteen, um, that I first met in two thousand eighteen when I first went to Ethiopia. This is this is the boy that the story is based on, um, and it was so amazing to return 
back to the same orphanage that he lived in, being able to film there and actually meeting him again. Um, it was it was really cool. So right here, this is a cool photo. This is I, I like to say it's this is fake Abel and real Abel next to each other, and and we were able to bring the 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 cast to kind of interact a little bit in these orphanages. So I actually have a question for for Ethan and Wena. Just kind of like, what were those first two days that we used at the beginning? You know, just checking out the orphanages, meeting the people. What was what was that like? How did it inform your character getting to meet these people in real life? Go for it, Ethan. Okay, cool. Hello. Um, those first two days were kind of, they were... I don't even know. It, it was a lot because um, it was my second time out being outside of the U.S. Um, and the first time I didn't even remember I was I was I was really young. So there was a lot to take in um, being outside of the country, being in Ethiopia. I think on for mo almost all of the trip, I spent most of the time looking outside the window every time we were out just to take everything in. Um, and when we got to the orphanages um, to to look at them and everything, it was, it was, um, apologies. <laughs> um, it was really interesting because I had, you know, I'd had all these images in my head while going over the scripts, um, with Josh as well and being there and, you know, experiencing where these people live in the condition, you know, the, the orphanages and everything and meeting these kids, um, and seeing how they interacted with each other. Um, how they interacted with us in the beginning. Um, it did a lot in helping shape Abel in the way, you know, I played him in the movie. Totally. Wayna? Well, I had a very similar experience, but I, I have a memory of, uh, of Ethan watching some of these boys, and it stands out to me because I feel like uh, it's what gave me confidence in what we were doing because we went to one of these locations and there was a group of boys who were chilling on this platform and listening to some music from their boombox. And I started recording them because they were playing my friend's song and I wanted to send it to him and say, a shout out to Tommy T. I wanted to send it to him and say, you know, they're playing your song. And I just happened to catch in the corner, Ethan, who was staring at them like intently trying to almost absorb you know, what he was watching. And then I, I observed him. I, di I didn't say anything, but I heard him quietly, like looking at them and then nodding. And then he said under his breath, this is for them. You know, and then he, and he, and he took that in and, and walked away. And I thought, look at this. You know, this young man is uh, really, he's coming to our country and he's, He's uh, telling our story and he's doing it with a, an open heart and a pure heart and with a lot of authenticity. And that was the moment when I decided that I knew Ethan was going to kill it. And he did. So um, anyway, just to throw that in there. So um, my personal experience was uh, was similar in that I, you know, I know Merit, you know, I've I, she's my aunt. She's my mom. She's the women I've grown up around. Uh, and she's, but she's different from me. So it took some time for me to really try to process her thinking and how she deals with the theme of this movie, which is really in the way I interpret it to be about how the human spirit copes with hopelessness and, and how different people deal with it. And you have people who are optimistic no matter what and believe they can make everything happen, which is, I think, Adonai's character. And then you have people like uh, Ethan's character who is, you know, who is skeptical and, and brooding and, and angry because of his lack of hopelessness. Uh, and then you have my character that's, I think, somewhere in the middle who has resigned that certain things aren't going to turn out the way you want them to, but then still has um, some sense of peace about it. Uh, and and I, I think you know Ethan's character goes on his own journey and how he how he ultimately decides how he's going to deal with his hopelessness. But for me, it was looking at how these these different perspectives on um, on optimism and um, and realism and trying to find you know 
who are the people in my life and and that I that I saw when we first got to Ethiopia that that show me you know that exemplified how this character was coping and processing her own hopelessness. Yeah, thanks so much um, for sharing that with us. Um, I mean, along those lines, I think probably one of the most memorable things that I remember from the shoot is getting to work with um, Abel and his friends um, on set. I mean, they, they were so excited, as were we, um, in collaborating together. They, like, they helped us on set with, with sound, with slating, um, and so it was very exciting to get them um, interested in film. Even we had, you know, some little guys, you know, getting a little silly with the slate too, but um, it, it was definitely um, unforgettable in that sense, getting to join together on all fronts um, and bring this story to life. Um, along those lines, well, before that actually, as we are, um, oh, thank you, Shari, for your question. As we are um, about, we're gonna talk a little bit about some stories here and there, and then we're gonna look at a scene. Um, in the meantime, we'd love to hear any questions that you might be having um, as we're talking through in the chat, so don't forget to keep sending those questions there. Um, Josh, we have a scene we love. Yeah, do you wanna talk about this scene? Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna do a we're gonna do a quick scene breakdown, a little preview of uh, one of the more exciting sequences in the film. Um, so, want you sit back, watch this thing. We'll explain a little bit, and then we'll hopefully get quickly to questions, and you guys can all bombard us with everything. <laughs> and then so did the whole team. Um, I just want to kind of like share a little bit of the, some of the behind the scenes process of, of kind of making stuff like this. This was our chase action fight sequence. See, um, we have us and the actors in the hotel um, kind of rehearsing this scene. And you can see in the background, those are, those are some suitcases and boxes from the missions team from uh, Orphan Care Ethiopia. Some of the supplies we were bringing over to Ethiopia. So we were able to kind of... Um, work alongside um, that team and kind of using spaces, using the hotel. We're so indebted to kind of logistically having space to do this, having time to do this. Um, then it mentioned Tamima earlier, who was our fantastic hair and makeup artist. Um, she was in charge of kind of bloodying Ethan up. Um, here is Ethan on the ground with blood all over his face. Um, I thought it was pretty funny. When, when we did this scene, um, this was in a market, in a crowded market. When Ethan got smacked with the bottle, there was a woman in the back that actually screamed. Um, she she was so scared that Ethan... Ethan yeah, I thought it was real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to get hurt and mauled. Um, and for those of you wondering, this bottle is not visual effects. This is a real uh, sugar glass bottle that was shattered um, on Ethan. And I think, Sophia, tell us a little bit about... Yeah, I mean, it was... It was this scene was the most exciting one to film, um, probably because we had been carrying those bottles like precious cargo um, throughout the entire trip. We shot it towards the end of the shoot, um, and no one could go near the suitcase. Or the, there were only two bottles of sugar glass, and it's extremely fragile, so no one could go near the suitcase. And so this was finally the moment we got to break them. It was very much like uh, <laughs> it, was, it was a very cathartic moment, and I think this video does the perfect job of of showing that um this is this is personally my favorite behind the scenes clip of the entire film just why don't you just watch it play it call it the other side team 33 i take one mark friend ready focus and action cut that was beautiful <laughs> yeah! is pure joy um ethan anyone does anyone have anything to say about that i, I love these moments i think we have a lot of them on the trip 
Oh man, I was so excited. Um, just because honestly, after practicing the stunt for as long as we did, um, all the drama that built up to like, we can't touch the bottles. Like, um, I was just really excited to shoot this. I've, I've never done any of like my own stunts to this extent. And that's something that I've always, you know, been wanting to do. Um, so yeah, I was, I was just really excited. I was like, wow, it didn't, it was a combination of, oh, we got it. Um, I think I reacted pretty well to it. Um, what else? Oh my goodness, it actually didn't hurt me. Like, it was just a lot of things coming together. You were, you were sitting on the ground for a while. That was true as well. Yeah. Eddie, we were trying to pour um, the, the orange soda liquid into this bottle. And this whole time, Ethan's patiently waiting on the ground um, with blood all over him on this dirt road. <laughs> and... Um, you yeah, sacrificed a lot for this film. I want to say Tom sacrificed a lot for this. Film. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, this this market um, definitely is going to stay with us. We we spent what we spent three days there with one really good day, um, which ended though with me nearly breaking the camera. All these like scenes of them running um, that lead up to this. Um, I actually filmed running because we we obviously didn't have a car or anything that we could film out of or anything. So I was running with them. And yeah, at literally on the last shot, on the last take, I managed to fall, but the camera stayed stayed intact, although my knee didn't quite. Um, but um, yeah, and then the next day we we were supposed to film all of that in the market, and it would just it just rained all day. I think we sat in the bus for about four hours, five hours, trying to wait out the rain, but it, it wouldn't stop. And at some point we were also like, it's not going to dry up anyways. And then the third day, when we finally, I think this was actually towards the end of, of all of that when Ethan was on the floor and we did all the stunt work and just being done with this scene with Ethan not being injured and with the market finally being done that's all in that I, I just kept rolling because because uh, Ethan's reaction was priceless yeah there's definitely a lot of, of these really cool and fun stories um, we could go on and on about them forever but um, Josh I'd love to hear um, about the future of the short, you know, where can people watch it? Um, what is going to happen now, especially, you know, in these times, <laughs> um, and for those for our audience, I would love to hear any questions that you might have. Uh, we're going to get right into it after let you talk a little about what's, what's to come. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, of course, the first place that you can see this film right now is the Greenwich International Film Festival. Unfortunately, like many other film festivals during this time, um, it has gone virtual, but that means that you guys can all access it from the comfort of your home if you are a pass holder. Um, and so that's where the film is currently. But this coronavirus thing has kind of really disrupted our plans for um, a festival premiere distribution. Our hope was really to get it out to you guys in spring and summer. So all of you who are backers, who have been following this project for a while is wondering why on earth is this project it's 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 here it's sitting on my computer and i just really would like to share it with you but we are waiting on on festivals and kind of seeing how this situation plays out Greenwich gave us an awesome opportunity to do this online and be able to have this q a and give this opportunity to pass holders to watch it um but that is where it is it is coming soon in perpetually for for the public um so if you want to stay updated please 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 um, keep up to date with us on social media. Um, that is the first place that we will be posting about any updates to the film, um, about what festivals we get into, uh, where the film is going next, if there's going to be an online release, if there's going to be a physical premiere, um, God willing. And all of these things um, can be kept up to date here. Um, we also have a website that you can kind of check out to kind of look more about the vision behind the film, um, see a lot of photos, learn about the team. Um, learn about the abandoned children crisis. Um, this is a huge, um, you know, kind of part of, of why we did this film. We want to remind people that this film is not just a story. It is a true story. It is happening. It is just one of 5 million stories out in Ethiopia. This is one of 5 million children. Um, and so we want to encourage people also to check out Orphan Care Ethiopia. That was the organization we worked with over in Ethiopia that kind of works um, to kind of provide support to 
orphanages um, and orphans out there. Um, so we encourage you guys to go check out orphancareethiopia.org. Um, there is also a docu series that Olivia and I filmed last or two summers ago, kind of talking about the crisis. There. So you can check that out, Kings and Queens on YouTube. Um, but we encourage you guys all to look out here. We also um, are kind of really thinking about what it means to maybe see this film, this short, um, in something a little longer, like a feature film. And we are working hard on development. Um, we are uh, have big dreams for the future on the other side. We just want to believe that this is just the beginning of something far greater, uh, far better. Um, and so if you out there are interested in development or financing or have any kind of inquiries in regards to the future of this project, um, please reach out to us. Um, here we have um, some emails out here. If you have anyone related to development, we'd love to reach out. Um, but yeah, I think, Sophia, we want to open it up to questions, the Q&A portion. Thank you guys for all sticking yeah. with me. I hope this has been... You know. Ab absolutely. Um, thanks again to everyone for listening through. Again, um, feel free to drop the questions in the chat um, and specify if you'd like to be on screen or not to ask the question yourself. Um, Shari, actually, let's start with Shari. Shari had a question earlier about, she said, um, I would love to learn more about the mission strip that inspired you to make the film. Um, Shari, would you like to come on screen to chat with the crew? Um, if not, that's perfectly fine. Great. Come on. Come on in. You can unmute yourself, Larry. I think you're still muted. Oh, is it because we've set everyone to be mute? Is that what it is? Oh, no, I'm able to. Uh, Tom, Tom, looks like Tom is doing it. Hi, team. Hey, Shari, how are you doing? <laughs> Wonderful. It's such a pleasure to be able to interact with you guys over Zoom. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Um, Josh, I know that uh, in your in your filmmaker video message and in our communications, uh, you've spoken about the mission trip that you took that inspired the film. And I would love to know more about what that original mission trip looked like and and how it ultimately shaped the narrative that you're telling here. Absolutely. Great question. And thank you so much, Shari. Um, for those of you who don't know, Shari is a program at the Greenwich International Film Festival. Um, so shout out to her and please go check this out, the festival out. Um, I think, yeah, it was it was a hugely influential experience for me. I've gone on several mission trips in the past with my home church in Virginia, McLean Bible Church, um, to the Dominican Republic, to the Philippines. I actually wasn't supposed to go to Ethiopia in 2018. And I think a, a lot of Things got canceled. We were supposed to go to the Philippines and things got messed up all around. Um, and I think we ended up in Ethiopia. Um, I wasn't supposed to be there. I, I didn't think I had other plans for the summer, but I ended up going to Ethiopia. Um, first time in Africa, I had a whole kind of preconceived notions of what uh, this world was going to be. I, I felt like I had seen, um, I've seen poverty before. I've seen different kinds of things before, but um, really just kind of walking into some of the most eye-opening and like, you know, deeply moving experiences of my life. Um, I think this, this whole, um, the, basically the mission strip is with uh, McLean Bible Church and Orphan Care Ethiopia is kind of like a, a sub-organization outside of, of that kind of comes through the support of McLean Bible Church, kind of working with local orphanages and local churches to mobilize support for orphans to battle anti-adoption stigmas, anti-orphan stigmas. Um, that is a huge thing that's going on in Ethiopia, just kind of giving um, hope and training and um, uplifting people there, um, hanging out with the children, um, and just kind of spending a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with these people. And I think one of the cool things that that mission strip exposed me to was being able to spend consistent time in an orphanage, being able to come back every single day. I think that is something um, that cannot be understated when it comes to visiting some when it comes to visiting someplace like this. You need to have continuity with these people. You need to have continuity with the people that you're visiting. You need to have uh, continuity with the children you're interacting with. Um, so that was deeply moving, and that was the whole reason it introduced me to Abel, the 16 year old boy. Um, and so, as much as we wanted to, um, uh, we we wanted to kind of uh, also give the crew that kind of experience. So we were able to also kind of have continuity with some of the orphanages that we visited. We were able to visit um, two of the same orphanages that I visited on the trip, um, on my missions trip. And I think 
Can I stop I, you for just one second? Yes. I'm so sorry. Uh, Colleen DeVere, the founder of the Greenwich Film Festival, would like to say a few words. Colleen, would you like to come on screen before you have to head on to another Zoom call? Absolutely. I think, okay, I'm uh, sorry. I, uh, um, I wanted to say to Josh and team, thank you so much for uh, taking the leap of faith with us and going virtual. I know it's um, incredibly scary um, in terms of piracy issues. Um, I can assure you that your film is safe with us. Um, I, I do have to say it was a major standout in all of the films that we screened this year, and we screened hundreds of films. Um, it's also one that I recommend to everyone um, who, who emails me every day and texts me every day. Um, but I'm very, very proud of your work. I think you have done an amazing job. And um, I, I'm really looking forward to this turning into um, a, a longer form film. Um, and I wish you the best of luck. Um, it's not a surprise that after I had seen this film, about five minutes later, I received a, um, an email from one of our board members who happens to be a studio head who also recommended it. And I told him right away, well, I, I can't tell you this right now, but I'm going to tell, uh, I'll give you a little hint that I have a feeling that it's going to end up in the program. Um, but I, I am very, um, very happy for you all. I think you did beautiful work. You have a huge future ahead of you. And um, thank you. Um, it, it's an absolute honor to play your film with us. And I'm sorry I have to jump off. I've got another Zoom in, in about five minutes. Um, but you guys are amazing. And um, congratulations. Good luck with everything. Thanks. And I hope to face to face um, in person one of these days. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. I think that was, that was so kind of you. Um, it, it is our privilege to be here. So thank you so much for, for including us here. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys. Take care. Bye. Yeah. So um, hopefully, sorry that answers your question just a little bit. Um, that's kind of like the stuff that we're doing there. Yeah. Thank you so much, Josh. Um, from S Susan Wegmuller, I'm sorry, I'm just pronouncing your last name. Uh, she says, congrats, everyone. A wonderful initiative besides the rain. What was, was there a particular technical challenge or obstacle you needed to overcome that changed the course of the movie um, or made it better than planned? Um, if you'd like Susan to come on screen, we'd love to have you. Um, and I think Tom can answer this question best. Um, we have a very memorable story, <laughs> I think, um, to answer your question. Um, yeah, I mean, the, there's, there's this one scene um, which was supposed to be shot right after sunset, which doesn't leave you a lot of time. And we had about 20 shots planned for it. <laughs> So um, time was, it was an issue for sure. And we're starting to rehearse to, to make this happen. And there was a lot of discussion if, if we should do it in that time frame or not, because if we don't get it, we might not finish the film in time and that would have not been very good. <laughs> um, so we start rehearsing, the sun, sun starts to set and we're about to start shooting. And then it starts, it starts drizzling, which obviously isn't good. So we get out the umbrella and everything and, and try to start shooting. Um, but then on top of that, the, um, the mosque, I think it is, is it a mosque? What was it? Oh, yeah. 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 So the mosque next door started playing, um, their music. And usually that is over in, in 10, 15 minutes, but this time it was a hour long service or something. So, um, we had music yeah. playing in the background it was starting to rain and we, we definitely couldn't shoot it this way anymore. <laughs> And Josh and me are standing there, um, the act is ready to go, and we're, we're trying to figure this out. And we, I don't know, I think Josh brought up the idea of doing this whole thing. This, I think in this film, it's, it's three and a half minutes, four minutes of a scene in, in one single shot, which usually is used to, to I don't know, to show how, how well you make films, but really for us, it was more of a necessity. And um, yeah, so. In addition, um, Ethan and Adonai had a stunt scene at the end where they, they beat each other up and where they have a big fight scene on the ground. So all that had to had to happen without the, the crash mat. So I, I walked down to Ethan with the camera 
told them to aim for the high grass. <laughs> and um, yeah, we, we told yeah. them we do it in one take and we started rolling. And I think we, we did it in two or three takes. We got the take that was best. We had to. You want to you wanna add to that, Josh? Our AD was breathing down our back because... <laughs> that was me. Yeah, fortunately, it was safe. No one got hurt. Everyone was okay, and it worked out. Um, but it was it made a, one of the best scenes of the movie. Uh, everyone, everyone upped their game for that. I think the adrenaline was pumping like crazy. Um, everyone was desperate to pull that shot off. And, but everyone, Adonai, Ethan, you guys elevated it completely for that moment. Uh, I think that was fantastic. Yeah, certainly. Um, Bennett Brunner, um, you have a question as well. Would you like to come on video and ask it yourself? Sorry. Oh, okay. There we go. Hey, Josh. Good to see you. How are you? I'm good. Uh, McLean's doing great. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Bennett actually starred in one of my other short films in high school. Um, with right. Mr. Denby. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm definitely going to see this film. It looks really great. And I was wondering, so when you were writing uh, the script and talking with all your producers, uh, what were you trying to inspire or what was your goal and your messages for the film? Um, for Ethiopia and just internationally? I think that's a fantastic question. Um, I think, first of all, it was it was nice because it was informed by a true story. So I had that to guide me. Um, I wanted to respect kind of Abel's story and, and I had a roadmap to kind of follow in, in regards to telling that story. But I think a huge thing that was always on my mind was making sure that we did not romanticize this kind of story. I think it's far too easy for Hollywood, um, for entertainment to take real stories, to take real issues, and then to spin them with a happy ending at the end of it. Um, and I think, you know, at, at the core of everything that we did, we needed to make sure that it was true. It was rooted in reality. This was, this was a film about reality. This is not a film about what we hoped it would be. And so I think if you watch the film and you finish the film, you'll kind of, you kind of end it. It's, it doesn't it doesn't finish with this beautiful you know tied bow at the end and I think it's reflective of the fact that you know most kids in Ethiopia most orphans do not get happy endings um, and I think as as I was writing that that was something that had to be true I didn't want to spin this in a way that was disingenuous. Yeah. thanks so much Josh and I think that's um, that's definitely one of one of the things that we all had to keep in mind um, Especially what you said about, you know, doing the whole Hollywood romanticism thing. We wanted to keep it as real as possible. Um, from Paula Hoffaker. Um, Paula, if you're here, would you like to come on screen to ask your question to the crew? Still, but I'll ask her on her behalf. So she says, congratulations to the crew. It's a great production and more importantly, the message it communicated. I was touched by the stories it tells very well reality that probably most Americans don't know about. Her question is, I'd like to ask the crew how making this movie made an impact in your professional and personal life. Um, I'd love to hear first from our cast, given that you guys had to work um, most, like you guys were the ones that were closest to the story. You had to, you know, bring it to life in your performance. So, Ethan, Arena, whoever has an answer first, if you'd like to go ahead. Um, I can go. Um, you know, I really felt like the, the theme or the message of this film came at a very critical juncture in my life. I mean, I had been thinking and praying a lot about um, how to process, um, you know, like having a goal and a, and a dream and then at the same time working toward it, but not becoming a slave to it and having this like personal uh, sense of peace and balance about anything you're striving to achieve in life. And so this was already in my, my thought process. And when a friend of mine had said to me, you know, 
whatever it is that you're dreaming for, you can't be attached to the outcome. Otherwise, you know, it becomes a convoluted process. So here comes this story, you know, written by this young man who is wise beyond his years. And the message is basically, you know, how, how does a person cope with, uh, with, with disappointment? And, and, then, and then also still pursue a dream, but with the right level of attachment. And so I, I felt like personally, it really spoke to, it spoke to me, it spoke to my, what I was going through at the time, which was basically to, to still love uh, something passionately, to still pursue your goals, but to do it in a healthy way, in a balanced way, uh, and, and to, um, you know, to, to, to love your passion, but, but to do it in a balanced way. So um, that's one of the things I personally took away from the story. Um, so what this, what filming this, the process of filming, uh, this film, the, the effect it had on my personal life is that, um, it really, and I think I probably said this a little earlier, but, um, <clears throat> it really just like confirmed that, um, you know, this is why I, I, I do what I do. This is why I want to perform. You know, this is, these are the stories that I want to tell. I want to use the talent that I was given to uplift others, um, to put others' stories in the spotlight. Um, and just being there, being with, being with those kids, I, I, being in, visiting those orphanages, I saw a lot of things that I, personally, I didn't think I would, I would really see in my life. Um, a lot of things that I will never forget. Um, and I was able, I, I thought it was amazing that how I was able to connect with some of these kids, despite the language barrier that we had. Um, I feel like a lot of connections were, were, were made in just being able to throw a Frisbee around or kick a soccer ball around. Um, and I saw, I, personally, what, another thing I learned was how different, um, the way that I saw the people in Ethiopia treat each other um, was really beautiful. Um, it was almost like I was watching people that uh, they could have met each other for the first time. They could have known each other for years and I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference. Um, there's a sense of like, there's a sense of brotherhood that, that seems to be apparent immediately. And I've never been exposed to that before. Uh, like being being in America, that's something that's something different. I can't like <laughs> I can't like walk up to a stranger immediately hug them and like just act like I've known them, you know, for for a while. That's that was a new concept to me, and it was really beautiful. Um, and it's something that I I felt like I wanted to bring back home. That kind of just treating people in that way. Um, was something that I wanted to bring with me. And I, that's, you know, these are just all little personal things that like it just came from being in Ethiopia and throughout the process of filming. Thanks so much. Um, I think actually Yabstra, all the way from Ethiopia, um, gently the one and only has <laughs> a question he'd like to say. Um, Yabstra, would you like to come on screen? Hey guys. Hey, how's it going? Gently. <laughs> hey, I do Wayna, Ethan, Sophia, Joe, Tom. How you doing, guys? I'm here. You're great. Antony, salam alaikum. Bam. I do Bam. Salam na. Yeah. Uh, so guys, uh, congratulations for the movie. First of all, and uh, I just wanna ask you, like, how the Ethiopian crew do, like. Uh, do we do great or like talk about <laughs> that? <laughs> that even a question? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's everyone. You've been like a best friend, I think. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, actually. Hey, I mean, don't tell them they did good because I, I want them to do even better next time, right? Broken <laughs> 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 like a true Habesha. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean, um, I think I. 
personally, um, other than the fact, obviously, like, things ran so smoothly on set. That's besides yeah. the point. But I think something that I always talk about um, when people ask me about my time in Ethiopia is um, when you guys, I think this is towards the end of the shoot, and we were having lunch together, and you guys pulled up with a basket of um, injera, and you invited me along to eat with you, and I thought that was so... I don't know. It was just so amazing to get to share that um, communal meal together. Um, for those of you that don't know, injera is an Ethiopian bungee bread of sorts, and you eat it with like different layers of um, meat and vegetables. Um, and it was just you usually like traditionally you eat it together. I think correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, in a basket, um, like sitting yeah. together, and you're not allowed to eat until everyone's been has washed their hands and is sitting together. Um, and it was just so amazing because I felt so welcomed um, and it felt like a family. So, <laughs> One thing I want to add is that the crew made the long bus rides so much more tolerable. Um, I actually think we have a, a video here of this is what the team van looks like <laughs> when, when we have the crew inside. Um, we have the casting crew and this is, this is, this is how they did things. Since I left the city, you <laughs> got a reputation for yourself now. Everybody knows it, I feel left out. Girl, you got me tired, you got me stressed out. Cause ever since I left the city, you. And I wanna, there's something that I actually wanted to add to um, Yapsara, everybody else on the crew. There's, from a production standpoint, there is no, there's no legitimate film school in Ethiopia. There's like a handful of them and, and all of them are really trying to make do with what they have. Like they're not, you know, they're really kind of give you very, very, very basic skills, probably not even skills that you can apply. So with Yapsara and everybody else on the team, these guys have like literally learned on their own and they're, they're really good. Um, I mean, definitely better than any of the talent that I've worked with in Ethiopia. But um, I will say kind of their positivity and just like willingness to do anything on set, you won't find that too many other places. And it's also part of like the Ethiopian culture of just being able to help out. But I will say personally, like there's nothing more challenging than filming in, you know, like uh, developing countries because there's so many things that you won't find in a textbook or in a YouTube video or anything that you could learn in college in the West and stuff like that. And I think that just kind of made, from what I saw, all, everybody a better filmmaker. You know, you know Tom and Sophia and, and Josh and just kind of their planning and skill set all kind of elevated because of the level of complexity and challenges that you can't anticipate. Absolutely. And we definitely could not have done it, again, with, with you have to try with all the crew. Um, you guys showed us the ins and outs. You helped us communicate, you know, with each other better, with the community, the like local Ethiopians better. Um, so in all levels, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, from Miranda and May Leong, actually, um, who unfortunately will not be joining us on screen, but what is the meaning behind The Other Side, the title oh The God. Other Side? Josh, would you like to? Wow, okay. So initially when I was writing, I thought The Other Side purely just referred to the other side of this wall. This wall that borders the orphanage is this wall that Ethan or Abel climbs over every single day to just kind of go to the outside world. Um, but I also saw the other side as being their dream, the, the life after um, graduating, the life that might include adoption. Um, what's on the other side is something that was a dream for them, um, a dream for Abel, this idea of who they could be, who they would be. Um, and, and I think ultimately, the film is, is seeks to define like what happens when that other side, you know, doesn't arrive. What happens when you don't get to your dream? What happens when, um, you know, uh, you know, that, that doesn't come true. There's a line, I think at the end of the movie that, that Wayne says, you know, um, sometimes it's not about what's on the other side. It's about who you become before you get there. Um, and I think that is the movie in a nutshell. You know, it it it, it didn't matter about um, whether they accomplished their dream or they got adopted. Um, you know, it's, it was about who the brothers became 
before you get to that place. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much. Um, we actually have a question from one of our uh, NYU classmates, Octavio from Bemnet. Octavio, do you want to come on screen or unmute? <laughs> you can. That's a dope name, by the way. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see all of you. This is so cool. I just wanted to say congratula congratulations to everybody, but especially uh, my fellow NYU students here. I just like, when I first heard that they were doing this, and we were 19 at the time, I was just blown away. I was like, oh my goodness, this is unbelievable. Um, and it's just been amazing to kind of witness this journey from the outside and seeing them really take initiative and uh, become young adults really uh, through this project in a way. And the story is amazing. It's just been very inspiring to watch from the outside. Um, and yeah, sorry, I like kind of had some long-winded questions. I like kind of just like spitballing. So feel free to pick and choose which ones to answer. But yeah, I, it's great I love to be here. I love to hear um, the question that you had from Bennett and he, what he has to say about working, um, like being the bridge between. Do you, do, why don't you ask it? Actually, <laughs> do you have it pulled up? Yes, indeed. Uh, for Ben, what was your experience like working with young filmmakers? Uh, can you share any stories about how you developed the film uh, with Josh specifically or whoever was involved uh, most closely? Um, and what was it like being the bridge between the U.S. and Ethiopian teams and being kind of uh, the glue, so to speak? Uh, by the way, I can tell you're filmmakers because you got that green screen going on in your background. I can see that. <laughs> uh, hey, that's a great question. I will tell you this. I think for me, it didn't feel like a student project. Um, Josh definitely is a very mature guy. Like he didn't, he didn't, honestly, I still, uh, I, you know, it, it, he just was, he brought a lot of maturity to, to the project. What I will say in developing the film, my experience from the producers that I've learned from, the executive producers that I've learned from, they give you valuable direction as to the visionary, right? So we're responsible for actually making it. So we know what things we should do in order to achieve the vision of the, of the film. What I loved about Josh and Sophia is that every advice that I gave, they, they either took it or improved on it. And um, there was an ego. And I think there was only one call that we had, which was a difficult call where the tone was a little uncomfortable and that's, it was rightfully so. Like, I think I had to earn their trust because A, I was in Ethiopia, they're in the US. The moment they hear if anything misses a deadline or something's not going right, like their reaction rightfully so is to, to doubt, right? But I think I had to, there was only one, one really tough like dialogue which we had, which I was like, which we resolved right away. Um, so I will say, I think, you know, working with uh, creatives and being a creative myself, like one of the biggest challenges is working with egos. That's really tough. I've only worked with one uh, hard, really hard, like difficult person to work with. And we had to fire him from the project. Uh, but he brought so much experience, like his portfolio and resume on IMDb is long, right? But um, I think you know, just producing for uh, brands like Adidas and working on these big projects and learning how to problem solve. That also kind of gave some weight to my experience. And I think to Josh's credit, to Sophia's credit, they were very, uh, they were very receptive to everything from feedback on scripts to feedback on scheduling, feedback on, on casting, everything that I recommended, they really, they really took to heart, which was refreshing. So that's my advice to young filmmakers and filmmakers in general. If you're gonna hire a producer, trust your producer because they're gonna be responsible for executing your vision, you know? So um, yeah, just kudos to both Sophia and, 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 uh, and uh, Josh and also to Tom who was really had to have the eye for, you know, when we're doing site visits and like, how do we shoot? And it's like, you know, recommendations on things like uh, people that don't know that, you know, uh, Magic Hour in Ethiopia is like, this long is like really, really short. 
versus in the U.S. So when you're thinking about these concepts in the U.S., you're like, hey, you have five minutes to pull this off. You know? Anyway, that's that was really uh, fun to work with people who were receptive. Yeah, and I just wanted to add, I cannot emphasize enough how integral Feminine was to making this happen. This like would not happen without you. Um, and I think, you know, yeah, we there was a lot of interesting things, I think, um, when it comes to just making a film when you're in, when, when you don't even get to, to be in the same country as your producer. I think that presented a lot of challenges for us, a lot of interesting things like time zones, like send something here and you gotta wait however many hours because someone's sleeping or, or we got internet blackouts and all kinds of stuff. But I think, you know, Bemnet was so flexible and everything we asked, he did. You know, I think regardless of um, whether it was like a location or we needed to change money, um, you know, things like that. Um, he had everything planned. I think a lot of those things occurred when we showed up in Ethiopia. There was a whole bunch of things that Sophia and I hadn't even considered that we would have to think about. Um, like like uh, importing the camera, like getting uh, embassy documentation to like even bring equipment into the country. We, we don't think about these things. They don't teach us these things in, in film school. So, um, yeah, just wanted to just wanted to remind everyone that this would not happen without them. <laughs> So let's, we're going to have some, um, two questions, um, sorry, yeah, just two, uh, last two questions before we wrap it up. Um, thank you guys for sticking around this long. We really appreciate it. Um, from Michael Abbey, um, Michael Abbey, who's actually was on the trip with us. All right, would you like to come on screen, um, and ask your question personally? If not, I can go ahead and ask it. If not, um, I'm not sure if he's still on, but. He asks, uh, which scene slash emotion slash narrative themes were artistically the most challenging to film or capture? Let me go to Ethan. Ethan and Wayne, what were the hardest scenes to shoot? Um, the scene in the office. I mean, I, I mean everything that involved the office. Um, <laughs> <laughs> man, I, I, just because, although, the, you know, uh, there are a few things I could say. I could say like the laying down the market and all of that because I was on the ground for so long. But I would say like the the office because it wasn't physically demanding. It was really emotionally demanding. Um, and we spent we spent the entire day just working out those. Yeah. So and it, <laughs> and it was really to. <sighs> Abel in 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 those scenes is in a ri in in that scene is in a really just dark place, um, and uh, me, Josh, and Wayna we worked um, we worked on it a lot before heading to Ethiopia. Um, and yeah, as I said, it was just staying in that place mentally and able to to to, to shoot. <laughs> those scenes, um, it's tiring. And then on top of that, personally, like I, um, there are moments where it's like, I, I didn't do certain things that I wanted to do. So then it was like, we had to, we kept redoing certain things and getting different shots in. So that was, um, I will say that I enjoyed it because it, it um, it's not something that, you know, you, you get to do all the time, but definitely the most challenging part for me in terms of shooting. I'm glad to hear that was your choice too, Ethan, because it was definitely, definitely my hardest uh, scene. And I didn't want to do anything before we were shooting that scene. People were calling me in my hotel, like, let's go get coffee, let's get a drink. I was like, no, I got to concentrate, I got to study. So yeah, that was definitely a very draining um, day. And I want to really give kudos to Josh for uh, being such a sensitive guide and just really asking all the right questions to help you delve into, you know, the most honest emotion that you could capture. And then finding those spontaneous moments uh, and coming up with ideas on the spot for how we could create a more um, authentic, you know, expression. and really Ethan also for being so generous and just gentle and, you know, just lovely. So he was so, um, you know, it was really disarming. You're very, really, really disarming. 
And I mean, to go from watching you in my living room, you know, like the, the month before or two months before and thinking, look at this talented guy. And then sitting across the table from you and trying to um, meet you, you know, was, was a wonderful uh, journey for me. And I, I just appreciate your generosity as an actor. And, um, you know, and I think you represented Abba well. And I'm really honored that you went from playing Yusuf Salam to playing um, an Ethiopian young man. And I think that there's a little bit of divine orchestration in that. So I'm, re I'm happy to see um, that story told by the same person so beautifully. I think, oh, sorry, really quickly. I just wanted to say about Wayne that you were phenomenal as well. It was it was actually a pleasure to work alongside you. It was a pleasure to be able to feed off of you in those moments. Um, you, I, I, I'm I, when I I'm so happy I got to work with you um, and um, Adonai because this was I, both of your first time acting in, in something like this, and you guys gave me so much to work with, and it was just it was just so much fun. So. Yeah, I just wanted to articulate that to you. I cannot second that more. Um, everyone, the whole cast was phenomenal, especially I don't know, I went uh, your first times and stuff. And, and just just so everyone knows, we we literally spent an entire day sitting um, in a tiny room um, with a desk and chairs and all. Too many people in a room, and everyone uh, everyone was so quiet. Um, we sat there for hours on end filming this conversation again and again and again. These guys, I think, took lunch at like three or four o'clock. Yes. We did not break for lunch. You could not get out of it. I remember Ethan was eating lunch so solemnly. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's such a good point, Josh. And I remember also because we had done all of Ethan's shots first and then mine were after his and it was about the time that we should have taken lunch and it was the crew who said no you know we have to do her because we wouldn't have the same emotional continuity if we had stopped and it was them who had said let's continue so that was really special absolutely yeah, exactly. um and then our last question actually before our last question um we have a special guest um naomi would you like to come on screen i think she has a few words she'd like to say for everyone Hey guys, I apologize for the hat. I'm having a bad hair day. <laughs> hair salons are closed, as you know. So I just came from a workout too, and I do not have the right attire here. But I just want to jump here for a quick second and say thank you and congratulations. I'm so proud of you guys. As you know, we've been serving orphans on ground on grassroots level for the last three, four years. You guys came on board you gave voice to the voiceless. It is a huge deal. And it's so encouraging to OCE and others on ground working so hard day and night to improve the lives of these orphans. And who you guys are, you took it to another level, you gave them a voice, a platform, you brought awareness to the world. And I cannot thank you guys enough, and I'm so, so proud. Thank you, Naomi. This is so so nice to, to hear from you. And I want to I want to say Naomi has been the one spearheading this this whole kind of movement in Ethiopia, this OCE thing. Um, you know, without her, you know, we wouldn't even be I wouldn't have even gone to Ethiopia in 2018. Um, and now there's we're able to have mission strip out there. Um, there's a lot of like grassroots organizing over there. I'm really trying to make a difference. So she's sacrificing a ton. Um, I think you guys should all really go check out on the screen over at Ethiopia.org. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, but yeah, Naomi and Dr. Z, her husband, were actually also in the film. Um, they were in there. You might have seen them just a, just a short bit in the last clip we played. But, but thank you so much, Naomi. Thank you so Naomi. much. Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to all the Habershas there. Bemne, Wainiye, Satamru. Thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Thanks, Naomi. And I think now for our last question, I think this is probably the best question to end with, um, from Josh Keller, who actually is um, has worked with us before. Josh, do you want to come on screen? Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, guys. Um, I uh, I just wanted to ask y'all, like, what 
do you guys miss the most from Ethiopia? I know for myself, like, um, there's just little things that from other countries that still stick out to me and still are like, you know, things that I miss or that uh, I wish I could have here. Um, so I was wondering if you guys had anything like that. All right. The food. The food, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely the food. And I think even more so, which I think is so unique, especially to um, the orphanage that we filmed in, was the coffee. The coffee was, in Ethiopia, is out of this world. It's delicious. It's never, have I, like, it's so good. I can't, I'm speechless. Um, actually, we have a picture of the coffee um, from one of the orphanages. Josh, I'm going to show it briefly. Um, what's so special about that, I think, is that every time we arrived on set, um, the women that worked at the orphanage would bear this coffee ceremony, which is, I think, part of Ethiopian tradition. Um, in these, they would grind up uh, the coffee beans and do all this whole ceremony, absolutely beautiful, and prepare us with this really sweet, delicious coffee. And um, I'm not sure what the bread was called, but it had spices on it, and it was so good. <laughs> um, I miss a couple things. I miss waking up ridiculously early with Tom. Um, and <laughs> sitting out right outside our hotel room because <laughs> that's the only place we would get Wi-Fi in our room. <laughs> um, and on a more serious note, I I really I miss I miss the people um, the most. I miss uh, the the crew and the cast, and I miss being um, at the orphan uh, at the orphanage that we shot the most at. Um, because those kids were, I keep saying it, but those kids were, were actually really wonderful people and cool to, to hang out with. So I really do. I mean, I miss the people. I have to second that. It's the people and it's the, the collective vibe of just being peaceful. Uh, there, it's, there's no kind of rat race, you know, life in Ethiopia. In fact, there's no such thing, for example, there's no such thing as coffee to go. Because the whole point of coffee is to sit down and interact and chill and have quality time. So I think that you feel that as soon as you step on the soil and I certainly miss that. We're getting a little taste of that here now in the midst of this uh, pandemic. But yeah, that sense of peace and solidarity. Um, you want me to go next? I'll, I'll, I'll say what I miss because now... Um, as of late, I'm now based out of San Francisco, so I'm, I'm in Ethiopia not as much as I used to be or I don't live there anymore, technically, but I will say one of the biggest things about living in a country like Ethiopia is the sense of community. You're never by yourself, like really, even introverts are, they, they probably might struggle, but you just end up learning the value of community and just uh, the power of being together and, uh, and just... Uh, you know, just a sense of family, even if you're not um, you know, in community with your family, you just always have people around you. So that's that's the part that's that's really near and dear to my heart. I'm gonna say, I don't know, it was, it was it was really cool just to hang out with everyone, basically making a film. Um, we're in the same hotel. we were in the morning, waking up at 4 a.m., seeing the sunrise because of jet lag and would go, would fall into bed when we go back um, because we had spent a whole day out on the streets, out in the orphanages. And I miss, I honestly miss the kids as well. I, I remember some days we would play um, football with them. We would play soccer with them um, outside on the grass. We would play like volleyball. And it was beautiful to say, see that in such in an environment that is um, not like ours, people can still have so much um, pride and have fun and look to the positive. I think the the thing that yeah the thing I miss most is is the orphanages and the kids and I think I, I think back particularly to our kind of little rap celebration that we had after shooting um, the final shot of the movie. Um, we all took a group picture with all of the, the kids from the orphanage also joined in in our our picture. None of them are shy. None of them are, are 
shy. They'll, they'll, they'll ask you to, to come play soccer with them. They'll ask you to hold their hand. They'll, they'll bring you around to this place. They're just so happy to show you the world. I remember, um, I, I mean, the only, the, the person I miss the most, you know, right now is, is Abel, the kid that I was so amazed to have even met. Um, returning to Ethiopia. And I think one of the things that, that really stuck with me when we were leaving is that um, right after we had taken the group photo and we're all celebrating, we we're all boarding the buses again. Abel takes me to the side um, and he kind of tells me, I'm turning 18 and I'm going to graduate this orphanage this year. Um, and it really hit me at that moment that we were making a movie about an event that was going to happen to this kid, you know, in this upcoming year. Um, and to me, that was, that was mind blowing. And he asked, you know, like, you know, he, he didn't know what he wanted to do. He didn't know what he was going to do. Um, he tells me he wants to, he wants to be like us. He wants to be a filmmaker. And I think maybe we left that with him a little bit, but um, he also told me that he said, I think I have a, a grandmother in, in a, in a, in a, Wasa, in a different city. Um, and before we left, um, production was able to, to put together some money to go get a, for, for a bus ticket for him. Um, and I believe, yeah, because a couple months later, um, I think at the beginning of this year, I get a message from him, um, with him and a photo of his grandmother um, after he had graduated the orphanage, he found his grandmother. Um, and so just being able to, to leave and impart um, a little bit of that on his life, I think, uh, Made everything worth it. I think at that moment we had. I, I I told myself and I told the team, you know, like this movie can end up nowhere. We can never win any awards. We can never go to any festivals, and it would have all been worth it because of that moment. Because we were able to go back and just see this one kid. And if this entire movie was just to get this kid a bus ticket to see his grandmother, then it would all be worth it. Um, so I miss that the most, um, and we're continually seeking out stories like those. Um, we're continually seeking out people like that, and. Um, we're just so happy to bring this all to you. So thank you guys all. Absolutely. Um, and just to wrap it up, I mean, we've said this so many times, but there has never been a greater family, especially on a work setting, for instance, than the crew and the people um, on the other side. So thank you to the crew. Thank you all for sticking around um, and your, for your questions for your time here. Thank you for the Greenwich International Film Festival for giving us the opportunity to share this with you. Um, and so make sure to check out, stay updated with the film on our social media and to check out the film on the virtual film festival online in the Greenwich International Film Festival website. Um, and so thanks again to everyone for your time. And we hope you have a wonderful day and that you're staying healthy and safe. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.